and I want to say welcome, welcome to everyone that is here. I see some of you are visiting us, some of you have come back to church. Yay! <laughs> and uh, for those of you online, we, you are so welcome. Thank you for joining us. And uh, this is our exciting times. Before I start, I wanted to, I read this, somebody sent it in a little message. It says, two things to make your day better. Do not watch the news and stay off the bathroom scale. <laughs> and I want to tell you that first one and the second one is actually very true. <laughs> but you know, as people, we are living in such an historic time. We all know that. But I want to tell you that this time has not been a worldwide pan pandemic since World War II. So you're actually part of history. And so that scripture just so came alive to me again that we mustn't become shrinking back and in the habit of some in not meeting together. That's a very important verse in the Bible that we need to keep meeting together because you know what? It's the church. And we are called to be the church and to rise up and stand together. And you know, in that scripture, it says, even the more as you see the day approaching, and what is the day? It could be the coming of Christ. It could be judgment day. It could be your day to see the Lord. You don't know. So encourage one another and let's encourage each other to, this is not a time to uh, sit back. This is a time to be alert. This is a time to hear and to see what God is doing. And I'm so excited. We've been doing the theme on calling in the harvest and uh, Pastor Jack shared the first one four weeks ago. And that same day, the Lord gave me the scripture as the theme scripture of what I need to share today. And I still thought, sure, okay, if I should share it, I'm going to share it. So this is the scripture, Isaiah chapter 60, verse 18. And when you hear it, you're going to think, wow. But I want to tell you, this is a very powerful scripture. And you can write it down and put it on your fridge and call it out and declare it. So this is what it says. No longer will violence be heard in your land, nor ruin, wasting, or destruction within your borders. But you will call your world's world salvation and your gates praise. Now let me unpack that scripture a little bit for you. And I, part, I want to come to the second part where it says, call your walls. Now, call. I have heard so many prophetic words in the last days that are talking about declaring and decreeing. And you know why? Because your voice does something in the spiritual realm that creates life. Your voice does something in the spiritual realm that creates life. So stop uh, not declaring, but declaring the Word of God. If you're going to declare negative news all the time, that's what is going to happen. So declare uh, the good news that God has given us. Your walls. So your walls could be strongholds, could be whatever is hindering you. But I want to say this, walls can also be your protection. Walls can also be something that keeps something out. So walls are a good thing. And then it says salvation. Now, salvation there means protection, means uh, victory and prosperity. So call your walls of victory. Come on, let's call our walls of victory. Call the walls of salvation and prosperity and then gates of praise. You know, every wall, there's a gate. You don't just have a wall. There's always a, a gate in the, in, the, in the wall, and it's of praise. And there is such power in praise. And actually, even as we were worshiping this morning, I realized there's an anointing when you're together. It's fine on your phone to listen to praise and worship, but when you're together, it's the Spirit of God that is so powerful. And then it says, so the first part of that scripture says, no longer will violence be heard in your land Freedom from internal misgovernment. We are living in the end times. 
And can you see that scripture today all over the world with what's going on? Even if you don't watch the news, you can sense what is going on in the world, that there is uh, violence and it's been heard in lands. But you know what? The Prince of Peace is going to ultimately bring peace to the earth. And so we do not have to fear, but we need to call our walls of victory and have gates of praise that can mean something in our lives. So that whole Isaiah chapter 60, you can read it at home. It speaks of harvest. In Isaiah 60, it talks about nations and politicians. It talks about, it talks about family and children, sons and daughters. It speaks about grandchildren. It speaks about wealth. It talks about camels, gold. It talks about money. It talks about the glory of God and the peace of God. And do you know that's all harvest? That is the harvest we are calling in. It's not only finances and as Pastor Joseph shared on health, it's, it's a harvest of people. So call in the harvest. You are here to call in the harvest, not only for your own life, but being part of the church and calling in the harvest of salvation. So call in your walls of victory. And uh, I'm going to read Isaiah 60 verse 1. And this is the scripture. And when I saw it, the Lord reminded me of the sunflower. And I have shared on the sunflower before. And I'm not going to share about it. I'm going to share a different aspect to it. And I want you to just, in your mind, picture a sunflower field as a wall. As a wall of the glory of God. And I tried to do that here in the back but I couldn't get many sunflowers, so that's all I got. But pretend it's a wall, and there's a few openings, because those are the gates of praise. Amen. Yes. So it says, arise from spiritual depression to a new life. Many of you have gone through depression. Some of you in different stages, because that is the one area that can really... Um, it can handicap you, is depression and oppression. And it comes through various ways. I want to tell you that our minds are very, very powerful. And so depression will start with our emotions and our mind, and we need to be able to take a stand and say, Lord, I'm not going to allow the spiritual depression uh, to take over my life. So we need to arise, and it says, shine the radiant Glory and brilliance of the Lord. That is our purpose, to radiate His glory. Not to live in spiritual depression, because that's where the enemy wants to keep you. You need to arise and shine with the glory of God. Because the light has come, and the glory and the brilliance of the Lord is risen upon you. You need to take that for yourself. Say, no. Every day, I will not allow this depression to get hold of me, but I am going to arise and I'm going to shine for the kingdom of God. So call your walls of victory. Call your walls of salvation in your life and for your family's life and for your friend's life because the harvest is ready. The harvest is out there. Now, we know that the sunflower I'm not going to go into details because I have, but it follows the sun. It gets its nutrition from the sun, and they stand tall. You'll never see a drooping sunflower unless it's not following the sun. And so you can take example from that. But we know that's not its purpose. You are meant to arise and shine, but that's not your purpose. The purpose for a sunflower is the harvest of the sunflower. There's one thing that can stop and hinder the harvest of sunflowers. And you know what that is? It's disease. It's called the black spot or rust. Either a black spot or rust, and so rust is something that it, it starts in the stem. Mo all of it starts in the stem and the leaves. And if it's not uh, dealt with, it actually goes up and it affects the head and it affects the harvest. It affects the how, ma how many seeds can be sown. From, uh, from that sunflower. So it's a brown, it causes, it's caused actually by a fungus, they say. And um, so they said, well, what do you do to treat this? 
and it says, spray all the plants thoroughly and repeat every seven to ten days up to the day of harvest. (laughs) Okay, so I'm saying to you that as you are serving the Lord and you are calling in the harvest and calling in the, the, the victory, there are certain things that you need to uh, do continually in order that your harvest is, is going to be a good harvest. And I've got four things, and some of them are a little bit difficult, but I want you to receive it because we are the church, and we need to be able to receive these things. And the first one is discipline and repentance. And I've taken the scripture from Hebrews Chapter 12, verse 4. This can cause black spots and rust in our lives. It says, in your struggle against sin, the Lord knew you have a struggle against sin. You have not resisted to the point of shedding blood. Okay, let that be an encouragement to you. And have you forgotten the word of encouragement that addresses you as a father addresses his son? So it talks about the Lord's discipline. Because many times we are going through things in our lives and we just think sometimes it's the devil or it's something else, it's ourselves. But many times we are going through things and the Lord's saying, listen, I want you to be disciplined. I want to love you as my child, just as you would love your child and discipline your child because that's, you know it's the best for them. And it's never easy. It's not even easy for the the parents of the child, but we know that it's for the better. And repentance. Repentance keeps you from changing. You know what repentance means? It means changing. It's not just crying and saying, I'm sorry, Lord. It's saying, okay, Lord, I'm going to change. I'm going to accept this discipline. I know it's for my good, and I'm repenting with it. So it goes together. It says no discipline seems pleasant at the time. Let's face it. But it's actually painful. (laughs) It's painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness. It's painful at the time, but it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. And you know, I have been a Christian since I was 16 years old, so that's quite a few years ago, and it's never stopped. God's always been my father, so he's always disciplining me, and if I don't repent and keep changing, and I'm going to turn away from him, and that's why he says keep repenting, keep allowing. That's That's why it says it's training, because discipline is training. It says, therefore, (laughs) strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees. Why? Your arms need to be strong so you can have gates of praise, so that you can lift your arms in praise and not hang down. When your knees are weak, they can't stand. Because that's why I felt the chains were being broken this morning from your feet and your knees are being strengthened so that you can walk forward in the kingdom of God and in life. It says, make level paths for your feet so that the lame may not be disabled, but rather healed. And you know what? We need to stand. We need to arise and stand. This is our time to stand. This is not the time to lay back. It's the time to stand. So call your victory, your wall of victory and gates of praise. Come on, use your voice and say, I'm going to call the gates of praise and the wall of victory. The second one is a called, I call it the Esau syndrome. And I found this in Hebrews chapter 12. It seems to be all in Hebrews, verse 15 and 16. And it starts off, it says, Let no bitter root grow up and cause trouble. Oh, bitterness is like a rust. It can consume your life and it will ruin your harvest. Don't allow bitterness in your life. And as I'm mentioning this morning things and you feel a, 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 a conviction in your heart, immediately say, Lord, I repent. I want to change that. It's not a, you don't have to cry and put sackcloth and ashes on. You just say, Lord, I'm going to repent because you're disciplining me. This is good. 
This is a good thing that you're doing for me. So it says, see that no one is sexually immoral or is godless like Esau, who for a single meal sold his inheritance rights as the oldest son. And afterwards, as you know, when he wanted to inherit this blessing, he was rejected. And even though he sought the blessing with tears, he could not change what, uh, what he had done. And many times we don't go through our walls with the gates of praise because of this Esau syndrome, because we have relationships, we have um, uh, situations that rob us from calling in our victory and calling in our harvest and saying, I will not take this. I am going to make the right choices and I'm going to arise and I'm going to shine and stand as the church of God in the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. So the choices you make have consequences. The Esau syndrome can happen to you every single day. But if you don't have that discipline and repentance in your heart, it's eventually going to rob you from that inheritance that God has for your life of harvest. The third one is called the trust issue. And the scripture is Proverbs 3 verse 5, and it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. You know what? Sometimes we have these trust issues, and I've had them. We've all had them. You know, we trust the Lord for our finances. And our understanding says, Lord, you said you would provide, but I'm not getting anything in. It's not happening for me. You trust the Lord for healing. That's another one. And then you're not healed. You say, but my understanding says that I should be healed. So our understanding gets in the way. The Bible says, trust in the Lord and don't lean on your understanding. Don't have a trust issue. Don't guard your heart from God. Because God is the one who wants the very best for you. Amen. And if he's not giving you what you want at that time, it may be because it's not best for you. It's maybe a time of hardship because of the harvest. So call in your victory. And don't be nervous. Say, I don't understand this, Lord, but I'm not going to lean on it. I'm going to trust you. Yes. Amen. The fourth one is that we need to have a sight requirement. Hebrews 12 verse 1 and 2, 3 says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus. We need to have our sight uh, 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 on him if we want to be able to not fall. When you're walking, you don't watch your feet, you look up so that you don't stumble and fall, so that you can look and see what God is actually doing. The joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and he sat down at the right hand of, the, of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. So before you, when you're getting weary and you're feeling you're going through the discipline and repentance, or you're going through a bit of an Esau syndrome where you need to make the right choices, or you're going through a bit of a trust issue, consider Jesus. Let your sight be on him. And let your sight say, no, I'm going to hear what the Lord says. And he says, don't grow weary and lose heart. This is what we need to be. We need to be standing, standing and shining and letting, arising and letting the glory of God shine. Not that that's our purpose. Our purpose is harvest. Our purpose as people is harvest. And this, maybe you feel a bit like this. This is a good and a bad thing. You could be ready for harvest. <laughs> Come on, you could be ready for harvest. So it's okay. The Bible says, don't become weary in doing good. It says, in the proper time, you will reap a harvest if you do not give up. 
Do you feel like this this morning? Don't give up. You are ready for a harvest, a good harvest. The next harvest that says, you know what? The next seed I sow, I'm going to be shining. I'm going to be standing. I'm going to uh, rise and shine out of the depression. If there's a bit of rust or black spots, that's a different story because then that's going to affect your harvest. So I encourage you, don't allow disease to set in and affect your harvest. You know, once a sunflower does uh, start to brown and die down, not from, a, from red rust or a black spot, it's ready for harvest. You know what the harvest is? The seeds in it. And those seeds, not only are they good to eat, they, they're healthy, but they're the seeds that get planted for what? The next harvest. And what else about those seeds? They get crushed, and the oil, the anointing flows. And that's your purpose, is to call in your walls of victory and have gates of praise and say, Lord, allow your anointing to flow. Help me to plant seeds so that the harvest will come. Amen in our nation. It's for legacy. That's for the next sunflower. Next sunflower uh, um, uh, harvest, the next whole sunflower field to be born. Our next generation. This, the generation here needs you because our generation under us needs us. Our young people need us. They need us to be strong. They need us to be shining and to be showing the glory of the Lord. And so I want to say that Isaiah 60, 1 and 2, 3, I'm going to read it again. And you know, the title is this, The Glory of the Church. That's the glory of the church. And you are called to be the church. Not on your own. We are called to be together. It says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and thunder. Thick darkness is over the people. We can see that in the earth today. There's a lot of darkness. But the Lord, there's always a but the Lord, hey. But the Lord rises upon you and his glory appears over you. So it says, nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. It's important for you to arise. It's important for you to stand firmly, to stand against the, 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 the spiritual warfare that is going on in the world today. You need to rise. You need to call in your harvest. You need to call in the walls of victory. The call in the walls of prosperity. Call in the walls of salvation and have gates of praise. I'll end again with that scripture that I want you to take home and I want you to write it out. I want you to write it out. Let, tell me that you're going to write it out. Are you going to write it out? It says, Isaiah 60 verse 18, No longer will violence be heard in your land. So Lord, I declare, no longer will violence be uh, heard in our land. No ruin or wasting or destruction within our borders. That's a good declaration. That's a good decree as part of the church to say. But you will call your walls salvation and your gates of praise. And I want to give you a call this morning and I want you to stand as if literally you are taking this call this morning to say, I am going to arise. I'm going to shine. I am going to accept what's going on in my life and what's going on in this world. I have a part to play. And I want you to stand with me and we're going to pray. And I want you as a symbol. So if you're at home, you stand there with your phone in your hand and let's call our walls of victory today in the name of Jesus. Let's raise our hands to him. Father, as we stand in this place today, we represent the called out ones, the church, 
And Lord, we make a declaration that we will call the walls of salvation, we call the walls of victory and prosperity, and we will have gates of praise. Thank you, Lord, that there will become a release and that the darkness will be uh, 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 sent forth where it belongs in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I want you to give a clap offering. I want you to jump again and to know that God is in control. Amen. Amen. Thank you.